Hello, Jellyfish fam. Welcome back to our channel. We're so excited to do like a duo presentation. We're not going to do as many of these as we would like because Diane is an expert in her, her field. I'm an expert at mine. Is that right, Diane? I mean, I guess that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided to come together and let you all get to know a little bit about the Jellyfish duo. So I'm Jelly. I'm Diane. And pretty much that name, Data Science Jellyfish, came from my first name and part of Diane's last name. So she has a fish in her last name. If you can kind of guess which one, you can put in the comments below. <laughs> and we'll thumbs up if you get it right. But we're going to go into why we decided to go into data science and how you can get started if you're actually interested in this field. So we're going to start off by going through our background and where we came from. So we weren't born data scientists. I know that's hard for some people to believe. You know, we didn't come out of the womb with our um, computers and Python skills automatically. We both have two separate journeys and we wanna share those journeys with you today. So Diane, I'm gonna let you go through your path towards data science and then I'll share mine after. Okay, thanks, Jelly. So I did get a BA in psychology and philosophy. That's a Bachelor of Arts, and it was a dual degree. However, I was not sure what I wanted to do with either of those fields. I just was really interested in the content and the material. So I studied both basically for fun and then finished college and had no idea what to do next. So I ended up getting a job in medical billing. I was a billing and collections supervisor for an OBGYN office. Um, and then shortly thereafter, I had my first child and due to the rising cost of childcare and everything else, I ended up taking a bit of an extended career break while I raised uh, that child and then my next child. So for any moms out there, it is possible to get back out there and completely pivot. Um, the next thing that I did was I did a data science boot camp at Flatiron School. And through that, I learned many data science skills. There are lots of boot camps out there, but I did have a great experience at Flatiron. Um, from there, I was able to get a job working for a software as a service company where I did some tech support as well as some data science consulting. And then I was able to get a job as a coach. So that was pretty awesome when that happened. And that's what I'm doing right now. Um, in my spare time, which I don't have very much of, but in my spare time, I do love all things Disney, just like Jelly, and love anything related to food and baking, um, love sunshine, going on any sort of adventure, and I do like yoga when I can squeeze it in. Your turn, Jelly. <laughs> and you're the best coach, so disclaimer, okay. you know, I'm <laughs> a little biased because you're part of the Jellyfish fam, but <laughs> Diane, it works alongside me, and she is my special direct coach. And she has some awesome data science skills. And I want to put a disclaimer on the two kids. They're super cute. They're both boys. <laughs> Thank you. They're super cute. So They're you want to have some but... super cute kids, <laughs> there's room for you to do that. So I don't have a family like Diane, but I have virtually adopted her children. So that is my family along with some super cute nephews, <laughs> uh, great parents, great siblings. But I started off with a bachelor's of science in biology. So a little opposite than the bachelor's of arts. So I always commend people who can get bachelor's of arts because my mind cannot think that way, right? <laughs> From there for about three years, I was a high school teacher. So I taught engineering. So computer science and electrical engineering. And it was me teaching engineering where I was like, hey, I kind of like this stuff. You know, I like the big data. I like the computer science concepts. Let me get a master's in analytics. So I was able to get a master's in analytics. And then from there worked in the data science field as a consultant and a client services manager. So both a leadership roles and client servicing roles, which I loved, but I've always missed education. My high schoolers really encouraged me. They kept me smiling all day. And I wanted to get back into the classroom and help people who wanted to gain education to go into the data science field, right? So I came back to Flatiron as well. Um, awesome boot camp as an instructor. And now I have Diane alongside me as well. So we're just killing it in that. Disney, I have a Mickey Mouse shirt on now. I go to Disney probably twice a year. Love, love, love Disney. Extreme couponing is also my thing. And I just love travel in general. So two different paths, but all coming back to data science. So that's the exciting part. So why did we actually choose data science? So Diane, I'm gonna let you go first again <laughs> and tell us exactly why you decided to make the decision to go into data science. Okay, thanks Jelly. Well, 
like my quote says here, in an age where misinformation is everywhere, data science does take away that factual uncertainty. So I love being able to make conclusions and recommendations based on real data points and generating predictions as a result. And like I said here, also modeling and AI are just fascinating topics to me. I love reading about the, my spare time, just all the advancements in artificial intelligence. So it's very cool to see how everything works under the hood, see how all these models are operating. And yeah, it's awesome. Your turn, Jelly. <laughs> so there's more than just, I guess, I Am Legend, that Will Smith movie. With AI. <laughs> is that considered AI, Diane? I think I it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> Where robots, like it's lear machine learning, right? The robots are right. learning things, like being <laughs> programmed, right? So the fancy AI, but we're not over here making robots necessarily. No. <laughs> automated processes right that can really help society so just like diane um i love working with the real data and knowing that there's a human behind each data point whether directly or indirectly makes data science very impactful for me because i always need that purpose in life because they say the purpose of life is a life of purpose i know that doesn't say much but it says a whole lot right so i've always loved that quote and trying to find a career that's very purposeful and impactful and i'm hyper if you can't tell already, right? So having new projects, dealing with um, new students, especially now with the various student experiences and then I'm learning from them as well and helping them with their projects. And there's always something new that keeps me on my toes and helps me from getting bored and sleeping at work, right? So love, love, love data science. So if you wanna get started in data science, like we did, right? Me and Diane both took two completely different paths, but it all came together at the end, right? And we all have, you know, some different reasons on why we got into data science, but both to have a purpose, right? And to solve these problems built off of facts. So how can you get started in data science? So we've kind of summed it up into three main things to do. And first is research, make a plan and execute. And um, Diane, you can really chime in on any one of these, right? Um, starting with research. The first thing is like, is data science for you? So Diane, what research did you do to know like that data science was actually for you? So I was really interested in programming in general, and there are tons of free resources that you can find on the internet uh, just to help you figure out if coding is something that you like. Um, and I did get involved with Python that way and realized that there is just so much that you can accomplish by learning Python and by using it. And like you said, to automate processes and so many different things that you can do. So I took that one step further and realized Python is used heavily in data science. Um, but again, it was a lot of Google searching. It was a lot of just going down rabbit holes, trying to figure out where is this going to take me and where do I want this to take me? So definitely research is important for sure. Yeah, because data science has data in its name, right? So you have to gather some of that data in qualitative data, right? We don't want you to make a decision to go into data science and you have no data to back it up, right? So exactly. what does a data scientist do? There's more than just a data scientist role in the field of data science, right? So it's very important to figure out what job opportunities are out there. What does it actually entail? And actually, and like Diane did, you know, test out with a little bit of code to see if you actually like doing some code, um, give presentations. And if you have that analytical thinking that really gets you excited every day, doing that research is definitely important. And also researching what education and training suits you. So of course, I think when I got started, even though I was a teacher, Diane, I did like free code camp and data yes. camp. And, free code camp was the best. And Khan Academy and yeah. oh like my gosh, I love Khan Academy. resources to figure out, okay, do I actually like this coding thing? And just like you, I'm like, okay, this gets me excited, right? And as Diane mentioned, she went through Flatiron, which is one of the um, greatest reputable boot camps out there for data science, as well of some other fields right and I decided to get a master's in analytics and that was a combination of data science we did some great presentations my master's came from North Carolina State University can't brag on them enough right the team there was awesome in preparing us for the data science world the data analyst world the business intelligence world the business analyst world so that was very very um, fun so yes research 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 to see if this is right for you and then make a plan so once you figured out it was right for you, Diane, how are you able to make a plan, especially since you had a family and your time is limited? So how are you able to remain dedicated and make this plan? 
Right. So for me at the time, what made the most sense was for me to do a boot camp program that was part time. And like you said, Flatiron always comes up as the number one uh, coding boot camp. So I did look into them. I looked into a couple others, but for me, it was most important that it be flexible enough where I would still have goals and I would still have deadlines and I would still be held accountable, but also that I would have that flexibility to do everything else that I was responsible for doing in my life. So there are, like you said, so many different paths you can take to suit your purpose and to suit what works for you. But that was, that was how I figured that out. Yeah. And I would have to say the same thing. Like my master's program was 10 months, but it was probably anywhere between a 50 to 60 hour week commitment with a good chunk of that being like in person, holding you accountable, um, having group mates, right. And our peers to lean on, to help us like stick to the schedule and being dedicated, right. Because that 50 to 60 hour weeks, for 10 months straight, it takes a lot of dedication. And even doing flex and balancing a family like you, Diane, takes a lot of dedication where you're not going to just throw your hands up, right? We actually were able to follow through with the plan. And so the last recommendation is to execute, right? So perform, have continuous professional development. Diane and I are always learning. As I mentioned, we have some amazing students in our cohort here at Flatiron. All the cohorts that I've been a part of have been amazing and they teach me some days, yeah. right? <laughs> so we're continuously evolving and developing as people, right? As data scientists, because expertise is far off if ever obtained, right? So don't be afraid to fail and also to continue to learn from others and take on some projects, right? There's a lot of good small projects out here that you can get started with. I know my first basic one was like a tic-tac-toe game in Python or something like that right that um that you're able to do so if you want to get started these are pretty much three main plan pieces of plans that you should put together to make a whole cohesive plan so now is how you get started what skills do you actually need right and this was taken from mango solutions this visual here but i like it because it hits on some top six core skills or capabilities that data scientists need to have right um, communicator. I think out of this list, and Diane would agree, I would think communicator and visualizer are the top two, because I'm always stressing, can you explain technical things to non-technical audience, right? Can you visualize complex data in a way that is digestible across the board when you're dealing with clients, right? And I love dashboards. I love Tableau. I love being able to visualize the data more so than cleaning, but it's necessary, right? So being able to communicate and having that pizzazz where people want to listen to you is very important. Um, wrangling the data together, being able to program, right? I do like to always say to my students starting off the bat and who are new to data science, the code is on Stack Overflow to a certain extent, right? So, I wouldn't go down a rabbit hole on trying to be an expert coder tomorrow, right? We're all learning how to code different things each day. But if you're a great communicator, you can critically think, you can analyze problems, you can provide solutions, you have good project management skills, right? The coding will come, right? People can train and teach you how to code. But some of those other areas, it's going to be hard to develop. Um, which one of these, Diane, do you feel hits most home with you? as far as so, some capabilities. Yeah, I mean, all of them are definitely very important. And yes, we do talk a lot about how communicating and presenting data to non-technical audiences is a big skill. And that also is one that we see students struggle with frequently. Um, you know, they might be amazing at coding, but then when it comes to making a presentation, it gives them anxiety and I can relate. I mean, it took a long time to get comfortable with presenting and talking to others when that's not something that you regularly do. So I just would say that any of these skills can be learned, but you have to go into it knowing that this is what's going to be required of you. You know, you can't just do coding. You can't just do visualizations. You have to be able to talk about it and explain what, what is this code doing? What are we doing here? What is this data showing us? And gaining those insights is really the skill that needs to be learned. I definitely agree. Yeah. You have to go from start to finish in the whole data science process, right? What is the problem to begin with? And really flush that out, right? That in itself okay. is a skill set and having that scientific thinking. So definitely agree. 
And so a nice little word cloud, and this has some of the more technical abilities in order to become a data science that we see show up. This came from building a data scientist from a WordPress blog, but Diane and I can definitely relate to some of these. Um, I think I've already mentioned Tableau, which is getting bigger and bigger by the day, just that dashboarding skills. I also teach SAS at a community college and thoroughly love that as well. It's actually one of my favorite coding languages. And SQL, right? SQL is, is top notch in the field as far as extracting, transforming um, data, right? Um, what about you, Diane? Well, I see Python is front and center. And for those who are not familiar with word clouds, basically the more that a word shows up in a set of data, the larger and more prominent it will be in the word cloud. So you can see Python is huge. Um, like Jelly says though, it's not everything, but it is, it is very big. And then, you know, machine learning is a big one also, data analysis. Um, learning data science skills means that you can apply them to a data analyst role, which is frequently where people start out as after they begin their data science journey, because you need to start from being able to analyze the data before you can really model with it. So I think that that's important to note as well. But yeah, there's a lot in here, natural language processing, which I love. Um, but I think that this is a pretty accurate word cloud of the skills that one might need to do any yeah. sort of data science role. And it's a lot. So it's not like yeah. you're going to hit all of these words, right? You know, pick some of the main skill sets and, you know, build up your expertise in those, right? Statistics is a big one, right? The, yeah. the oh data and data science is built on statistics. One of my friends and coworkers, she is a statistics guru. Um, and so statistics we have to get her on here. <laughs> we have yeah. to get her on yeah. here. We're going to have a whole little <laughs> meet her session, right? So, <laughs> but yeah, statistics is just something that's very fundamental when you're trying to figure out what math do I need to know, yeah. right? Yeah. It's going to be that statistics and linear algebra, right? That's going to put propel you forward in the data, data science field. Right. Because that's the foundation for understanding how the models work is, is all stats. Yep, and you need that understanding. So now get into some projects and Diane is gonna share one of a project that she was able to work on as she mentioned through her boot camp journey at Flatiron. I'm gonna speak to one that I first was exposed to through my master's in analytics um, boot camp, And that is gonna be this bullet point right here about substance abuse relapse. So we were able to utilize R, so not Python, but another bigger word, big word that was on that word cloud to um, predict when, uh, person may relapse in a substance abuse treatment center. And this was a very impactful project that we were able to work on where we can look at a whole different, a lot of different metrics, how often they call um, the substance abuse center to ask for help, um, whether they have no shows for drug screenings, things of that nature, and all of the different factors that may contribute to whether somebody could you know, relapse with substance abuse and of course lead to death, right? So data science can be used in an indirect or direct way in saving lives. What about you, Diane, for your project? Absolutely. Well, that sounds like a fascinating project. Um, for my capstone project after the boot camp, what I did was I analyzed a whole bunch of posts from sources like YouTube and Twitter, um, a lot of different platforms where teens and young adolescents are uh, active on, and I scanned them for cyberbullying. And I was able to build a model to predict whether or not a post is considered cyberbullying or hate speech or not. And why that's important is that, you know, like I said, these people, these young adolescents and teens are on these platforms. A lot of the times there's no one monitoring them and they can say some very hurtful and hateful things. And that can have a huge impact on someone who doesn't know how to handle it, someone who isn't equipped to handle it yet because they're not as emotionally mature as an adult. And these things are hateful even to adults. So I think it's a really important topic just to be able to figure out how can we classify this? And there are filters out there already. There is AI that is doing this already and helping some of this get blocked, but it's not enough in my opinion. So I think that that's something that really needs to be expanded upon is being able to predict when a post is too hurtful for its audience. 
I agree, Diane. That's some of your psychology background coming yes. out too, right? <laughs> and the so, mom thing too. The mom yeah. thing. <laughs> and the mom yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> Having that empathy, right? And how mental health awareness and issues around mental health and suicide prevention, those are very important fields where data science can actually be a help towards, which is awesome. I like to call them data for good right doing data for good for humans and both of our projects were able to do that data for good thing so awesome awesome okay so now that we talked to you a little bit about how to get started our background why we chose such an awesome field as data science and some of our projects and the skills necessary we think that we ha you have what you need to kind of get started start with that research figure out if data science is actually for you and if it is we're definitely excited for you make a plan and then execute on that plan. We'll be more than happy to take any comments, questions about this field in the comments below this video. Um, let us know how your research is coming along. If you've done a different path, share your story because your story can be a testimony to someone else. And as always, we wanna say thank you. Please subscribe to Data Science Jellyfish and like this video, and we will see you in our next video. Thank Bye. You. Bye.